Hands are transferred to the laying barn before laying begins to allow them to adjust to the new environment. Males are usually introduced to the females approximately one week later. Flocks come with their own instruction manual that contains detailed management instructions including what types of vaccines to use and when to use them. Generally, the birds are vaccinated several times throughout their lifetime. Photostimulation occurs after both sexes are in the barn. In nature, birds lay eggs when days are getting longer to take advantage of warm summer weather. The same principles apply to broiler breeder hens. Once the birds are of the appropriate body size and maturity, the lights in the barns are turned on for longer periods of time, stimulating the hens to begin laying eggs. Flocks are generally photostimulated at 22 to 23 weeks of age. Photostimulation can be done any time of the year because outside light is blocked out. Breeder laying barns typically have about two-thirds of the area covered by raised slats made of wood or plastic. The waterers and the feeders for the females are placed on the slats. Manure falls through the slats and is left to be cleaned out at the end of the breeding cycle. The males and females have different feed requirements. It is important that they do not steal each other's feed. Male feeders hang from the roof in the scratch area at a height that is too high for the females to reach. Females have narrower heads compared to males, so the female feeders have closely spaced bars that are too narrow for males to reach in and steal the feed. It is important that the males and females spend time together in the scratch area of the barn for mating to occur. A male can mate many times in one day. Mating involves elaborate courtship behavior including pecking and scratching for feed and vocalization. Hens can store sperm for about 14 days, so it is not necessary for them to mate each day. Hens perform a post-coital fluff following mating. This behavior is believed to help draw the semen up the oviduct and help with fertilization. The ideal breeding male has an upright posture and adequate fleshing. Notice the difference between these two males. As the male ages, mating frequency decreases. Sometimes, when fertility throughout the flock starts to drop, some of the non-breeding males are removed and replaced with young males. This process is known as spiking a flock. The young males mate frequently, which is thought to stimulate older males to mate, resulting in improved levels of fertility. Just as the males have to be managed to maintain fertility, so do the females. Care must be taken to ensure that hens maintain a healthy body weight so they will have good egg production rates. Hens are fed a diet with sufficient calcium to make sure they produce quality egg shells. So how is the egg made? The yolk of the egg originates from the ovary which consists of large and small follicles. Follicles are developed egg yolks in varying stages of maturity. The follicular hierarchy allows the hen to lay one egg per day. The dominant yolk will be released from the ovary and caught by the infundibulum. It travels down the oviduct where the egg white or albumen and shell membranes and shell are added. Overweight hens may experience excessive follicular development. This can cause the production of double yolked eggs or the production of more than one egg per day, which is undesirable. These hens may develop problems with locomotion and health. A healthy hen's oviduct produces one egg per day, but when two eggs are formed in one day, the shell gland cannot adequately calcify either egg, resulting in shellless eggs. These eggs will not be sent to the hatchery. Nests are provided in the barn to give the hen a clean, private place to lay her eggs. Most nesting systems provide individual compartments for hens. However, some producers have colony nests, which accommodate up to 12 hens at one time. Barns have automatic egg gathering systems. Typically, these eggs roll away from the hens onto a fabric belt and are taken to a processing station in front of the barn. Eggs that are laid on the floor can become soiled and are likely to contaminate the hatch during incubation. By eliminating shadows and periodically walking the barns to move birds, producers can reduce the amount of floor eggs. 
Eggs are usually collected approximately four times a day to keep the belts free of eggs so they don't break against one another. Only high quality eggs can be sent to the hatchery. Eggs which are cracked, broken, or dirty must be separated. The eggs are packed with the small end down so that the air cell is positioned at the top of the eggs. The eggs are placed into trays that will be sent to the hatchery for incubation. The same trays from the farm can be placed directly in the incubator at the hatchery, eliminating the need for handling each egg again at the time of setting into incubators. Eggs must be stored between 16 and 18 degrees Celsius and under relatively high humidity to protect the new embryo within hatching eggs. Maximizing hatchability is important. This is the number of chicks hatched per egg set. This storage temperature range is much warmer than table eggs to ensure embryo survival, yet cool enough to temporarily halt embryo development. Eggs will be stored until they are picked up to be taken to the hatchery, which is usually twice a week. Once the eggs are warmed, embryo development begins again. So from day-old chicks to full-grown egg-producing parents, broiler breeders have a remarkable journey. Hatching egg producers continually ensure the supply of fertile eggs for broilers. These eggs eventually lead to the birds we eat.